Hey, do you want to hack a website? No. What if we just hack it a little bit? Yes, I'm to hack it a little bit. Okay, can you grab the mouse? And how old are you now, Ari? Um, three. You're three, so you're, you're ready. You could do this, couldn't you? Okay, so let's go forward again. Now, what we want to do is we're going to hack this website just here. Now, can you click on one of these links? So let's click. You want to click on that? Oh, you click the back button. You got little hands. So that's the only problem with a three year old hacker. Your hands are a little bit too little. So you put your hand on top of the mouse. That's a boy. And now we go forward, which is that button just there. Okay. Now, which one of these should we hack? What if we hack? Want to hack that one? Yeah? So you press the button. Press the button on that one. Okay. Now, the way we're going to hack this website is let's look at this URL up here. Okay. So we're going to stretch that across a little bit. Can you see that? Can you see that bit up there? Shall we copy that? Does this look like a good one to hack? It is just going, going to be a movie. Well, maybe if we hack, we could get movies. So you got to drive, you take the mouse. Now, can you see the little carrot down here? You see yeah. the little carrot on the bottom of the screen? Let's click the carrot. I like carrots. I know. Well, this is a great carrot. Okay, cool. So let's maximize this. Now let's paste that up to here. Okay, how about we do that? Now, you ready to hack? You all ready? You sure? All right. So let's analyze that link. Now it's trying to do the hacking. Do you think we'll find any movies if we hack this? We might. This has found a database. Look at that. You see that down there? That's found a database, hasn't it? Should we hack that one? Yeah, I want hack that one. You want to hack that one? Okay, you grab the mouse. All right, let's go up here to the tables. And it's found one table. Look at that. That's a funny looking table, isn't it? <laughs> Table. Okay. Well, actually, it's not a table. It's a database. We need to find the tables. So can you help me find the tables in that database yes. now? Let's go up and we click on Get Tables, which is just there. Whoa, nearly, nearly. Whoa, whoa. Okay, slow down. Okay, now it's looking <laughs> for all the tables. How many tables do you think it's going to find? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Found seven tables. Good boy. Now we need to find the columns in the table. Shall we find the columns? You go to the mouse. So I think this looks like the ASP.NET membership provider, doesn't it? Is it? Do you recognize it? Yes. Okay, so grab the mouse. So let's, let's get membership because we know that in membership we're going to get some email addresses and usernames and passwords. Yes. So let's get the columns. Shall we get columns? Yes. Okay, go get columns. Okay, now we wait. Okay, can you see all the columns coming up there? Look at all those columns. So you look over on the left side of the screen. That's a lot of columns, isn't it? Should we get the data out of the columns? All right, let's get some data, mate. So let's let's scroll down a little bit and we're going to get let's get the email address. Is that one a good idea? And let's get the password. Whoa, there it is. And should we get the password salt as well? We better get the password salt, otherwise we can't crack the password. Is that all? You want to get the data now? You press the button. Press the button. There you go. Oh, there it is. Okay, hang on, here it comes. Look. Oh no, look. There's somebody's email address. And there's a password. And there's the salt. And this looks like the membership provider with just the SHA-1 salt, so we can brute force that, can't we? Do you like hacking? Yeah! Can you give me an evil laugh? <laughs> ah, good boy! Okay, well that was a little bit of fun. Uh, Harry got to hack his first website, which he seemed to enjoy. Um, we might work on that evil laugh a little bit, but for the most part, I, I think he did pretty well. But the, the interesting thing with tools uh, like Havage is it just does make it so easy. It's point and shoot, and the guys using this really don't need to have much understanding at all about what's going on underneath. But I thought I'd show you anyway because it's uh, it's quite interesting and it's it's a little bit clever. But one thing first, you know, the guys that are using this um, are just, 
they're really just trying to find anything they can that they can attack and um, easily exploit. Uh, so they'll do things like they'll just jump on the web and they'll do Google Doc searches for uh, paths with query strings such as uh, ID equals. And in, in fact, I'll link to some other videos, etc. in this, and you'll see uh, sort of just how discriminant it is. So, um, you know, this is not necessarily that the hacktivists uh, trying to sort of support a greater cause or anything, they're looking for low hanging fruit. Um, so that's how indiscriminate it is. Okay, so with that said, here's that vulnerable web app uh, running on my local machine again. And clearly what we did before was just clicked on a link and we had the query string parameter which is being passed through to a SQL statement and clearly uh, what we've been able to do or what Havage has been able to do is manipulate that parameter to start exposing uh, internal structure and internal data. Now out of interest, if we try and put a non-integer value in there, we'll see that this website also uh, does have a little bit of a, a case of security misconfiguration. It is returning internal error messages. The free version of Havage works well with this. It won't do blind SQL injection, uh, i.e. SQL injection that works when internal error messages are not exposed. It won't do that unless you pay them some money. Um, as tends to happen with uh, evildoers, they've gone and cracked it anyway, and there were plenty of sort of cracked versions of uh, Havage Pro running around that will do blind injection. But let's jump back a sec, and I, I wanna show you what's actually happening under the covers here. So we have the virtue of having this site running here locally. So I'll jump over to SQL Profiler and just clear what I've currently got in the trace there. When this page loads, all that's happening is just a very simple select star from uh, widget where the ID equals in this case 5. Now clearly 5 is whatever is passed in in the query string. So let's now jump over to Havage and what we might do is just uh, let's fire up that URL and let's see what Havage is actually injecting to try and expose that internal data. So when we first ran this we obviously had a different ID that was running up on uh, App Harbor. They assign a fairly random uh, database name. Uh, locally on my own machine, I've called the database not a safe web. If we jump over to uh, SQL Profiler, we'll actually see those queries that were just run. Now, interestingly, what seems to be happening here, first of all, that was just the initial request. It's then going through and prompting a little bit. So a query like this is probably going to start to cause exceptions. And as we go a little bit further, we get typical SQL injection statements like and one equals one that uh, is probably going to go through and pass. Um, in fact, we can quite easily check if it's going to pass because we can just jump over to SQL Server Management Studio, drop that in and see how we go. Beautiful. So we still get back the same value. So what's happening is Havage is looking at the response codes and it's looking for any error messages. And as we jump through a little bit, so it's clearly just trying to establish risk here. So something like that, I suspect is not going to play real nice because it is an unterminated quotation mark. Eventually we get down to a query like so. And actually the other thing to note, you'll see that obviously the initial query is the same on everything. Select so star from widget where ID equals because that, because that is what is statically encoded into the web app. Everything after that is the parameter which is dynamic. So this particular query, if we run that guy up, is going to give us the database name. Now, interestingly, that database name is coming out of DB name. The trick that Havage does very, very well is how do we actually get internal information exposed externally via the web page? And in fact, what they're doing here is you can see that it's trying to convert to an integer the DB name. Now, of course, the DB name is a string. It's not going to convert to an integer. It's going to throw an exception. And because our error handling is not configured correctly on the web application, that exception is going to bubble up to the screen. And that's why it's been able to figure out that the database name is not a safer web. Okay, so that is kind of clever. Now let's jump back into Havage. It has the database name. Let's go and try and get the tables. So we go, okay, get tables. Now here's all our tables. So we saw SQL Profiler in the background there just do a whole bunch of queries. And what we'll see now is some queries that do start to get a little bit long. And it's often easier if we just copy this guy over into SSMS and run it. And we'll see that, uh, again, we do get exceptions. It's trying to grab some information from sys objects here. Where it gets interesting is that if we go down to the next query, 
and run that guy, we have got the number 12 in there. Now it's interesting because encapsulated within that string value, we've got an R, an exclamation mark, uh, a 12, exclamation mark R. Now, again, what's trying to happen is Havage is issuing a query which is trying to build up a particular data type and then cast it to another data type which is going to fail. And in fact, what we can see here is we're concatenating char 82 with char 33. Now, just for reference, char 82 is an R and char 33 is an exclamation mark. So, R exclamation mark and then it is actually going into sys objects and it is grabbing the value or rather is going to be grabbing a count of the objects that are in there uh, of a particular type which I assume um, is the column type and when it concatenates all that together and tries to convert it to an integer it's going to fail and it's telling us hey we've got 12 tables now if we jump back into profiler we can see that as we go through each one of these records here there's one value that's changing down the bottom right here select distinct top three four five, six, seven. If we copy that query, what's happening in here is we are getting table names. And it's a similar sort of trick where it is trying to concatenate a character, character 126 in this case, which is the tool to character. And it is trying to convert it to an int. It's going to fail. The message is going to bubble up to the screen. What Havage obviously does is it looks at this tilde as a string delimiter and it says, okay, everything in between there is our table name. So that was ASP.NET users in roles. If we go down to the next one, I'm sure that we'll get one of the other tables that was exposed. Run that guy up, ASP.NET pars. So it's just enumerating through these and it's using the fact that there is an injection vulnerability and the web application is exposing those internal error messages to be able to figure that out. So let's clear that and we'll jump back to Havage. We've got tables. Now the next thing that Ari and I did is we went to ASP membership and we said, okay, great, get us the columns. Similar sort of deal again. And what we'll find in here, I can't remember what query it is off the top of my head, but one of the first couple of queries is going to give us a column count. Uh, in fact, that's already getting through to columns. So application ID, it was probably the query behind or just before that which will let Havage know how many columns it's got to go through. Okay, 21 columns. And then it's the same sort of deal. And you can see as we go through each one of these, again, it's trying to convert to an integer. It's appending uh, a character at the beginning, which is not going to cast to an integer. So an error is going to occur, and an error is going to bubble up to the screen. So very clever. So that's how it's determining that uh, internal table structure. It's not the only way to do it. There are many other ways to cause SQL Server to expose that information to a badly configured web app. But that's the way Havage does it quite effectively. So the last thing that Havage did is it said, okay, well, you know, once we figure out what we want and we decided that we wanted email and we wanted password and we wanted password salt, get me the data, similar sort of deal again. So when we jump into here, we're going to get a row count from this query so Havage goes okay great we have got three rows and then what it's doing is it's just going through each column that we want on each row and again casting it to something that won't cast and then returning the data that we did want from the middle of that string that we were trying to cast so what we find is we get one column, two column, three column, and then the next row. One column, two column, three column, the next row, one column, two column, three column. And that's how it works. So it is really that simple. Now, of course, once Havage has this information, then you can dump it out somewhere locally and you can put it on pastebin or do all sorts of things that, that they tend to do today. Uh, it will go through any number of records as long as the web server is happy to keep serving uh, requests to SQL injection style uh, patterns. Now, of course, the mitigation is also exceptionally simple. And if we go back to this particular app, the problem that we have is that it was just grabbing the query string, it was appending it to a SQL statement, and it was executing it. So we didn't have any sort of uh, parameterization, any sort of whitelisting, uh, anything which would have either kept the malicious data out or made sure that it was separated from the query when it was sent to the SQL server. 
So in this case, it would have just been as easy as saying, well, look, let's have an ID integer. And before we go any further, if we can't do a uh, int.tryparse on this, let's try and do an int.tryparse on the ID, and then we'll pass out the ID integer. If that's not going to work, then we're going to probably not normally just throw an exception, but for today that will work just fine. Let's go application exception, and we'll just go invalid ID. Now, of course, that does have to be a new object. And ideally, what we want to do also is pass that into our parameter later on, although, of course, if it wasn't an integer, then everything would fail very early. Now, if we do that, when we try loading this page again, first of all, it should work because that's a legitimate request. If it was an illegitimate request and it wasn't an integer value, it should throw an exception. Now, that's great for us. It's not great for Havage because when we do now try and analyze this with Havage, Havage just really doesn't have a clue what's going on. And it says, are you really sure that this is a value? And it just can't go any further. So the mitigation is very simple. In that case, that was just a whitelist validation. Uh, against uh, making sure that the, the value was an integer. Strictly speaking, it probably should be a, a positive integer. Uh, it's probably easiest done with a regex in that, uh, in that case. We did not do any parameterization, string concatenation, like what we've done just there is really not what we want to be doing. We'd be much better off passing that as a parameter so that regardless of any whitelisting, it couldn't actually break out of the data context in that query and, and get into the, the, the query context. Uh, and really, that is how easy it is to mitigate. But unfortunately, a lot of people don't, which means that guys that just want to have a go at hacking sites can go and do those Google Docs and they can fire up something like Havage. And as Ari did, they can uh, get in and just about get anything out that they like within the space of a few minutes.